Well, we're polishing our barrel and uh, getting ready for the browning. And uh, I've got some 320 wet dry and a nice backer. And uh, you can see here the kind of the grain, whatever finish uh, came from the factory. And then this is after uh, 320 grit on these flats here. So um, haven't decided if I'm going to stop at 320 or continue on to 400, but there's a good view. You can see the kind of the difference, um, a little bit finer grain with the 320. So we'll continue with that. I'll clean it all up. Uh, there were a couple spots where I had to clean up on the muzzle. Oh, speaking of the muzzle, I left it last week. Uh, I really cleaned it up quite a bit. You can see there on the outside. Um, I like it. It's pretty well polished. I used a uh, 2000 grit belt on my uh, little one inch by 30 inch belt grinder that I have. I still am waiting for the uh, that brass lap is supposed to be here today so I can actually lap the inside of this because that screw didn't do anything. Um, so we'll get after that. Hopefully when it comes in tonight, but that's where we're at. Just getting polished up. So just for a little better perspective than just the straight down view, you can see I've got uh, the barrel clamped in the vise so that the top flat sits proud of the uh, soft jaws here. We've got it chucked up pretty good. Make sure that those soft jaws are good and clean because any like debris or anything that's on there. When you cinch this thing down, it's going to be pushing on the uh, barrel that you just got done polishing. So uh, it's getting a little bit tricky around the uh, tenons, but no big deal. So we will uh, see we're polishing out stuff like that. Uh, it'll look good when we're all done. All right, guys. So. I ended up getting after it with the 400 grit and uh, looks pretty good. I only did the top three flats in the 400 grit because that's what's going to be sticking out of the stock. And you can see the difference between the 320. And one thing I did, I did do is uh, the last couple passes, um, I tried to go the full length of the barrel in one straight motion to avoid getting any uh, kind of diagonal scratches in it. So it seems to have come out all right. One other thing I did today that I didn't film, uh, so I've been a little under the weather the last couple days, so I've just been kind of plucking away at this and not really filming what I should, but I did go ahead and use that antiquing brass tarnish brass black whatever it's called and I, I'm pretty happy with it I let it I let it get fairly dark and then I came back very lightly with some steel wool and I, I'm I'm digging it it gave um, kind of some almost purpley rainbow kind of colors in some of it and I didn't I didn't take it all off I just very lightly with the steel wool but I am very happy with the results it looks cool so I think that with this barrel browned and then the stock, I just keep, so the stock, I just keep putting a coat of true oil every couple days and that stuff is set up pretty hard and then I'll hit it with the steel wool to take the shine off. But I think the combination will, I think the combination will look pretty good when it's all said and done with that darkened brass. But there's only one way to find out. All right, fast forward to its new cool tool day. I got my uh, brass laps, they came in. Got them from this guy off eBay. So hopefully we'll see if they work. Um, it was only like 25 bucks. It came with this little thing of extra fine. It says 4A lapping compound. So um, it, it looks a lot more finer grit than way way finer grit than that 220 grit stuff that I was using so we'll give this a shot and we'll see if it gets that uh, 
crown that we were looking for. And you can see here, there's just no crown to speak of. There's barely enough to, to make a shiny little lip on the edge of there. So um, I'll hit it with, uh, I guess we'll try, uh, which one do we use? The blunt or the pointy guy? Blunt guy, pointy guy. Well, that thing about falls in there. So I guess that answers that. We're going with pointy guy. Pointy guy it is. All right, I'm going to do that and we'll uh, check back in. Well, it took a hot minute, but we got the crown cut. Um, I ended up using the, uh, you can see this inside, how oh, shiny. I ended up using the uh, pointy boy here and this uh, JB bore paste, which is good stuff uh, for defouling your barrel. If you got a lot of copper fouling and stuff like that, uh, this and some croil, if you don't know, eh? works pretty good and it's a nice fine not quite as fine as the stuff that came with it I don't know what the grid is on it it doesn't say um, but it's pretty fine and it worked worked pretty good it still took quite a while and several applications of this stuff uh, but we got it done so now it's time to blue or brown rather well there's the first layer of browning and would you believe I didn't even film it? I got so caught up in what I was doing. So, yeah, I made a big old mess too. So, quick rundown. I heated it up with the um, torch here. I uh, got the browning, these, this plum brown, onto the little sponge bob here. And just long, even strokes, the best that I could. So... That's just gonna rust up. I mean, instantaneously, it starts rusting. And uh, so it just instantly starts to rust. So we'll give that a little bit until it's cooled down enough to touch. And then I will hit the four out steel wool uh, with some carbon choke cleaner to degrease it. And we'll card off that rust and that'll be the first layer of browning. Um, I predict we'll, we'll probably do four or five coats of browning before it looks nice and even. All right, so it's pretty warm still, but cool enough to handle. Kind of gnarly looking, all this rust, but that's how it works. And uh, we're gonna card this off now. I've got my four out steel wool, I uh, degreased it. Um, this is acetone, right? Carbon choke cleaner. So degreased it, deoiled it, and it says go ahead and put decent pressure on it. Don't worry about messing it up because we're going to do several coats. Um, so we're getting all that rust off the scaling. I'm going to have to uh, figure something out to get down inside the dovetails for the sights. But, so, a little elbow grease, and I will uh, finish doing that. Here, check it out. That looks pretty cool. It's kind of uneven, but it's going to be like that until we put a few coats on it. But that already looks pretty awesome, actually. I like it. Yeah, I'm sure it's kind of a plum brown. It. I wish, I need better lights or something. It's really hard to see the color. There, it looks pretty good in the camera purplish plum brown looks good so i'm gonna card this off and get it all set up for the next uh next coating
Coat number two has cooled down enough to touch a lot less of the uh, scale rust this time. It just looks kind of blotchy and gross. So I think I'm putting it on a little thick. If it's if you're getting runs, you want to kind of avoid that. So maybe this next coat I will put on a little less. But down here on the muzzle end where it was real thin in spots, it looks like it uh, starting to even out. So I'll card off all this nasty stuff and show you what it looks like when I get done. All right, so there's coat two carded rinsed and uh yeah starting to start i mean it's still blotchy but it's starting to even out much better than the first coat so i'll just show you as we do it all right so i kind of cut back and mm -hmm. just did i think i did a total of six coats um i didn't see any reason to film every single part of that and then uh, covered everything with uh, the book at the book called for used motor oil. Um, so I thought about draining the oil out of the dirt bike, but I, I just used some fresh motor oil that I had. Uh, and so our, oh, also after, um, before the motor oil, after the last coat of browning, uh, I soaked it in a PVC pipe that I had, I filled it up with baking soda and water. And that was to stop this reaction because if you don't neutralize this acid, it'll just keep rusting. No matter how much uh, oil you put on it, evidently it will just keep rusting underneath of there and you'll end up with some pitting. So uh, I'm gonna go wash this off. It's covered in, like I said, motor oil. I've wiped most of it off and we'll wash it with uh, soapy water. And then I will hit it with gun oil and uh, we'll look at the finished product. All right, so it's mostly dried off. Um, wash it with some soapy water. You know those streaks? I went to a muzzleloader show this weekend, and, and a lot of the barrels had those streaks in them that were brown. Uh, depends on, you know, the method you use and what product you use is what the, the old-timers were telling me. But I'm pretty happy with how it looks here. And... Um, Hopefully it provides a good layer of protection. That's what's most important. And so we're gonna just wipe this sucker down with some Hoppy's Field Wipes. And this is just regular old Hoppy's gun oil um, on these rags here. Uh, the muzzle came out pretty nice. That rust in there is no big deal. It's it's just from the browning process. I tried to keep it out of there as much as I could, but uh, just some ballastol and water normal anyone who, who's done any black powder shooting knows how quickly these things will will rust after you uh you shoot them at the range or whatever so uh, just normal cleaning method should take care of that um and uh i'm gonna hopefully go have this thing put together and do some shooting with it next week so stand by maybe we'll make a video of that too i gotta put the sights in and uh put the thing together and that's uh, that's it so thanks for following along this far um, hopefully we have a working muzzle loader next week thanks a lot